With a Senate vote in favor this week and the expected passage in the House, the Respect for Marriage Act is well on the verge of becoming law. It would require all states to recognize as legal marriages from other states, including same-sex and interracial marriages. Congress passed it as a preemptive strike of sorts against any potential future attempt in the courts to overturn those protections for same-sex marriage and interracial marriage. The bill, which was opposed by both Florida senators, is a big victory for the LGBTQ community and everyone who supports its position. Orlando Gonzalez is the executive director of SAVE, that is an acronym for Safeguarding American Values for Everyone, and a leading voice in LGBTQ issues. Orlando, waving back to you. I know you can't see us, but thanks so much for being with us. Orlando, great to see you. So thank uh, you, Glenn and Michael. Great to be with you this morning. We're so glad you're here. So uh, the the fact that you know that this bill is going to pass in the it passed the Senate, will pass the House. Already passed a version uh, in July, and President Biden says he'll sign it. I mean, this is really a huge moment for the country, but especially for the uh, LGBTQ community. Absolutely, this is really a momentous uh, period in time. Any time that a Supreme Court decision and a law can be passed, essentially codifying uh, some rights as much as possible or any kind of legislation, that is really tremendous. Um, and I say that with some trepidation because the bill is not totally ideal. Uh, it has some provisions in it in which um, it pulled back some of the rights that were given in the Supreme Court case, um, but we'll take what we've got for now and keep fighting. Explain that. What, what kind of pullback do you mean? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. So. Um, this bill sort of contains three pieces, right? So the first piece is that it repeals DOMA, which is the, the Defense of Marriage Act that was signed by President Clinton in 1996. And essentially what that did is it defined marriage as being between one man and one woman. So it pulled that back. Um, the next thing that it did is that it issued uh, a requirement that states must recognize marriage licenses from other states. Now, the most unideal sort of situation is this third point, and that is that they removed the requirement that states must issue licenses. And so right now, marriage licenses are a patchwork of laws all throughout the country, and so not everybody um, has uh, provisions that support that. Here in the state of Florida, we have two conflicting pieces, right? We have our constitution that says that marriage is defined between one man and one woman. That was done in 2008. Uh, with uh, amendment number two, but then at the same time is that we have a Florida Supreme Court case that does allow for marriage. And so those two are in conflict. They've never been codified and rectified together. And so there is that piece that in terms of requiring states to issue licenses becomes a bit of a game of jeopardy for many of the states out there, including our state, I believe. So there will be some challenges coming up. Um, I think that the upcoming legislative session that starts in March um, will be uh, pretty brutal for us. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just was going to say, uh, as you well know, and as Glenna reported earlier, both Senators uh, Rubio and Scott voted uh, against this, and both of them said that they were afraid that it's going to impair somehow religious liberty in this country. Uh, please, well, here's the statement, in fact, from Marco Rubio. Religious organizations, including orphanages, women's shelters, and schools, would likely be subject to crippling lawsuits if the so-called Respect for Marriage Act becomes law. Respond to that, Orlando. Uh, is, are his fears uh, genuine, or is that just political? It's political. You know, I, I, I want to make sure to note one thing, and that is that several amendments were made to the bill. One that was introduced by Senator Rubio, and one of those was removing the ability to uh, uh, sue states whenever uh, marriage licenses wouldn't be added. So he added an amendment that would be able to protect uh, people from, from discriminating from others because of, of marriage licenses. I think it's hypocritical to propose an amendment and then not vote in favor of the bill when you're making an amendment to soften its blow. Um, the other thing that I wanna make sure that is really uh, noted is that the bill, the way that it's written, makes uh, an enormous position that actually supports religious freedom. Those of us in the LGBT movement and in human rights movements have always supported religious freedom, right? And so there's a, a, a way to be able to support religious freedom by being able to put some guardrails on it so that we are able to both have religious freedom and, out, and have the human rights as much as possible. And what I mean by that is that 
in the bill, just like in the Equality Act, there is a shout out to RIFRA, right? The, the, the bill that was created back when uh, President Clinton was also in office, it's the Religious Freedom and Restoration Act. And that bill clearly outlines that there are protections for ministerial acts. In other words, no bill would be created or no law would be created that would force a religious institution to conduct yeah. a gay marriage, right? So there's no there's no way that we're going to push a religious institution to force them to conduct a religious or, uh, a same sex uh, marriage ceremony. On the contrary, what we do look at is saying, hey, there's a math teacher working at a religious school. That person shouldn't be fired or lose their job because they're there to teach math. They're not doing anything that's ministerial. So these are really nuanced provisions, and they're really careful, and I think that they're really well thought out. So when Ruby or Scott sort of make these claims, they are really giving the mass populace a very lazy excuse for why they are bigoted in the way that they vote. You know, this Orlando comes about in the wake of overturning in Dobbs Roe versus Wade, um, which in its language was really specifically about abortion and abortion rights and its overturning. Um, this, we sort of characterize it as a, a preemptive strike. Um, and it's important to note that the ban on same-sex marriage is still on Florida's books and people are able to get married because of the 2015 court case. So does this, you know, marriage is a, is a state's rights, abortion is state's rights. Is, is this going down the same path, do you think? Yeah, it's possible. It's totally possible. And, and definitely, you know, when, when the Roe v. Wade decision was reversed, um, uh, Judge Thomas made a very clear statement saying that there were other cases that needed to be reviewed, prior Supreme Court cases that stand in precedence. And so that included the Ogrefell case, that includes the Loving case, which covers interracial marriages. And so these threats are very real. The last two legislative sessions with Governor Ron DeSantis at the helm of the state, we've seen lots of threats against our community. And so really, whenever there's a new yeah. low, it's no surprise. It's what we yeah. expect from our current uh, legislative yeah. body that is there and what we expect from the traditional anti-LGBT right. legislators. Orlando, I'm going to have to jump in. We are out of time. Very glad to have you on our program today and uh, congrats on, you know, a law which is good for all of us. We appreciate you. Thank you, Glenna and Michael. Great to see you. Thank you. you.